41. Determine the bond order of each member of the following groups and determine which member of each group is predicted by the molecular orbital model to have the strongest bond. And then we have our three molecules here. So we have F2, we have F2 plus, and F2 minus. Well, in order to find a bond order, this always comes from the molecular orbital configuration. So it's a big mess down here, but we will simplify it. Now, bond orders, since they come from those configurations, specifically, they come from valence electrons. So first things first is we just have to find out how many valence electrons we're working with. Now, when they give you a list or a trio of molecules and they're all the same, but one, you know, two have charges and one is neutral, just make sure that you work with the neutral one first because then it's easy to manipulate your configurations. So let's go straight for the fluorine, F2, and let's figure out how many valence electrons F2 has. Well, I look on the periodic table, right, and fluorine is in group 7A or 17, right? But for each of them, lucky number is 7. So each fluorine has 7 valence electrons, but there are two here, so I have double the fun, right? So I have two times the amount of valence electrons. So if I take my two and I times it by seven valence electrons, I will now have a total of 14 valence electrons. Beautiful. All right, so that's going to come super important in a little bit. The next thing is, is we now have to choose which general molecular orbital configuration are we going to use? And this goes by the group number. There are some groups on the periodic table that have different configurations. So groups 1, 2, 3A, 4A, and 5A, they have this configuration, while the other ones, 6A, 7A, and 8A, they have the other. The difference between these two is because of sp orbital mixing, but that type of ideology or idea is not for like a gen chem class, that's if you're doing like an upper level chem class, like a chemistry major, like a physical chemistry. But for right now, it's just easiest to memorize these two configurations. Since we're dealing with 7A, because we're dealing with fluorine, I'm going to pick this configuration. So for the other configuration, we don't need it anymore. But I just put it up here just to show you that there was two. You can pause the video if you want to, to write down the other configuration, but... Bye-bye. All right, so this is F2. Now we just have to do a couple of things to just make this electron configuration fluorines. The first thing is we have to decide whether we're in 2S land or 3S land, right, or 2Ps or 3Ps. And that comes from the period. F2 is in period 2. So 2's all around. So I'm dealing with 2S here's. And I'm dealing with the 2PXs, 2PYs, 2PZs, 2PYs, 2PZs, 2PXs. Okay. So now just know that these are your orbitals. There's two different types of orbitals. There's sigma bonds, which is this symbol. And there's pi bonds, which is this one. And just know that for every bonding orbital, the ones that you don't see a star, there are antibonding equivalents. So these hook up together. These are equivalents, and these are equivalents. But now, I've written this in such a way that as you're increasing from left to right, you're gaining energy. So if we're going to try to place our 14 electrons into this configuration, you got to start from the beginning and work your way up. Just know that every orbital can only have a max of two electrons. So let's go for it. So we need 14, so I'm obviously going to fill up the first molecular orbital, so I'm going to drop two electrons in there. I'm going to fill up the second one as well. I'm going to put two in there. That's a total of four now. I need 14, so I'm going to keep going. This one, two, so now I have six. I got to keep going. Now this one, you have two electrons max here, two electrons max here. For, so for the pair, you have a total of four valence electrons. So let's see, if I put a four up here, two, four, six plus four, uh, six plus four is 10. So I'm going to keep going. And this is the same exact idea here. I'm going to put a four here 
And now I have the max. 6 plus 4 is 10, plus another 4 is 14, which means that I have no electrons in this one. So we'll keep it at that. Whoop. So now what's going to happen is for these, we are now going to find the bond order, right? Now the bond order is a very uh, simple formula. It's this formula right here. And maybe I'll just make this a little bit smaller. But basically any bond order is just the number of bonding electrons minus the antibonding divided by two. Now antibonding are pretty easy to spot out because it's all the electrons that have the star next to it. So usually I try to find the antibonding first and then that helps me with finding the bonding. So let's go for it. Bond order equals something minus something divided by two. Antibonding, look for those stars. Here's a star, that's two electrons. I got other stars here, so that's four electrons. And technically there's no electrons here. So two plus four is a total of six antibonding. So six antibonding, and now how many bonding? All the ones that are left over, two. Here's another two, so that's four. Four plus four is six. And four plus four is six. Right? Two, four. Four plus four is six. Oh my goodness. Christina, four plus four is eight. That's right. <laughs> there you go. So eight. And now we're just going to do the math. So maybe I'll just pull this up. I'll just pour this over a little bit. Because for this one, eight minus six is two. Two divided by two is a bond order of one. So we have our first bond order answer. Now we're just going to do our charges. Doesn't matter which one you pick. So maybe I'll do F2 with the plus charge. Now what does that plus charge mean? Well, it's a plus one, which means that you lost one electron. So what you can do is you can copy this and all you're going to do is just get rid of one electron and you get rid of it from the end. So technically if we don't have this anymore, I could basically get rid of it and you're working from now backwards. So this four will drop down to a three. So now I only have three electrons here and now I can do the bond order. So bond order equals something minus something. Whoa, that's a big division sign. So something minus something divided by two. Antibonding, I have two, and now I have three. So I have five here. Bonding, I have two, four, four plus four is eight. So there you go. So eight minus five is three. Three divided by two is 1.5. So I have that bond order. And now we just have to do the last one, which is F2 minus. Well, this is now the reverse, right? A negative, which is a negative one, means that you gained one electron from your neutral compound. So I'm going to take this copy and paste it on in. And now I'm going to add one electron. I can't add it here because this is the max of four. So this zero now turns into a one. How easy is that, right? And now let's just do the bond order. Bond order equals something divided by something minus something divided by two antibonding two four and now five right well one more so two plus four is six um yeah two plus four is six plus one more is seven so here is seven Oop. and now how many electrons here for bonding two four, 
4 and 4 is 8, so that doesn't change. Okay? So 8 minus 7 is 1. 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5. And those are your three bond orders. So the bond order for F2 is 1, the bond order for F2 plus 1 is 1 1.5, and the bond order for F2 minus 1 is 0 0.5. Now, the thing was, which one has the strongest bond? The strongest bond is always going to be the highest bond order. So now you're just basically ranking the numbers. So out of these three, 1.5 is the highest number. So F2 with the plus charge would be the strongest bond, and that's it. Oh yeah. So what'd you think? Let's make this nice and pretty, and then we are done with the video. Hopefully this helps. Okay. Thank you for viewing the video. Let me know in the comments if this helped you or not. Molecular orbitals are kind of crazy concept, but if we can systemize it down to these couple of steps, everything will be good, all right? So good luck on your tests and quizzes. If you wouldn't mind, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. That just gets the word out there that this channel exists in the YouTube universe. Thank you so much, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.